Hello, it's Crypto CJ, and I'm back. Been gone six weeks for the holidays and some personal reasons, but it's uh, good to be back doing my Friday afternoon Zoom. Unfortunately, crypto hasn't really done that much in the past few weeks. Uh, Bitcoin's just been going mostly sideways, as has Ethereum. Let's go to the charts and check it out. Okay, you folks should be seeing my Bitcoin day chart. Yep. All right, I've got the prior range that we were tracking, but that broke in November, created a new range. And so this is pretty much where we're stuck right now between uh, about 15.7 and uh, 18. But in the very recent past, say the last 10 to 12 days, it's been even smaller between about 16.4 and can't seem to break above 17K. So we seem to be in holding pattern, accumulation, whatever you want to call it. It can be, I mean, ranges like this are sometimes fun to, to trade as a day trader, but the volume has been so low on the exchanges that there hasn't been a lot of movement in the major coins and, and some of the, the major altcoins. So that's been disappointing. I, I just started getting back into trading early this week. I traded a little bit last week and uh, had some good results with some shorts uh, towards the top of the ranges. We'll talk about those a little bit more later. Uh, so that's my my Bitcoin range on Ethereum. Before my computer problems, I had a smaller range drawn in here from uh, about 13, 1350 to 1100, which is a mini range for Ethereum, and it's been just hanging around in there lately. So not much going on with those two. I was going to throw it open to the attendees to see what your opinions are, say, for the year 2023 for Bitcoin and Ethereum, or maybe even the first quarter. Uh, see, so we got Terry on board. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pump him for some knowledge since he's so good at to creating those cycles. So, but anyway, I'm interested in what everyone has to think about this. Uh, the Crypt Nation guys have been talking about uh, most of the year going sideways, accumulation, and then maybe pumping in the third or fourth quarter. Uh, allegedly, there are institutions on the sidelines waiting to get in. So that could be one theory. Uh, we still have potential, you know, looking at the economic picture, you know, widespread. Yeah, we 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 haven't stamped down um, you know inflation yet, and that's bleeding into you know the crypto markets. But people aren't aren't chucking their Bitcoin and Ethereum. Most people are hanging on to it. So you know maybe that's a good thing. Uh, anybody want to chime in and see what they think about the markets overall? Uh, don't make me call on you. <laughs> I'm waiting for Terry. <laughs> he might just have uh, be lurking in the background. He does that sometimes. So, um, well, I I sort of agree with you. Um, I I think it appears that the bottom is in, but what that means, I'm not really sure because. Um, I just think, you know, maybe we're not going to go lower. I definitely think we're in an accumulation stage. Um, it really depends. I think what happens really depends on market conditions, whether we have any more collapses based, you know, um, because of FTX or, or anything else um, could affect. I don't think it's going to cause the low to go lower but i think it could just delay the recovery but um based on the bitcoin halving everything is tracking exactly as it has in the past so um so you know we are looking i think at three to six months consolidation and then then it could really start to move that's my opinion based on all sorts of things I've listened to and heard. Yeah. I wonder how much uh, inflation really plays a role in this. One would think that would help Bitcoin and Ethereum, but 
you know, scaring people off risk assets. So that's been, been frustrating for me. I was really hoping that Bitcoin would take off with all this inflation going on, but um hasn't seemed to work out that way. So, well, I think the, the small players just don't have the surplus funds. Like, you know, they need the money to that was surplus to live. Hmm. So um, there's, I think there's less, you know, the little people are not engaging in the same way. Partly because it's it's flat and it's dead and it's um, the fear factor is very high, but but also people just don't have the surplus funds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I'd love to be loading up on some more Bitcoin, Ethereum, and I even like kind of like Cosmos too. And you know, just not comfortable and you know, getting my trading them. I'd have to move, you know, trading funds to do that, and you know, I don't want to do that. So I'll have a decision to make sometime this year about if I want to accumulate. Um, Terry did send a message saying he's eating at the moment, so maybe we'll uh, check with check in with him a little later. Uh, anybody else want to chime in with a, an opinion? Feel free to disagree. So very well. Well, can we trade now? What can we do, you know, for day trading? We do, you know, it's what I like to do: make a few trades a day, try to pop them for one, two, three percent. And, you know, as you guys all know, this is the altcoin alert section of my call, and we're going <clears> to <throat> look at uh, potential trade options. What is this? I don't want that. Okay. And I've got that open now. So, just um, just before we start this, um, CJ, let's have a look at the um, just the overview of things of how many are bearish, how many are, you know, some of the Alcoin Alert overview sort of scenarios. Because <laughs> before we start digging into specific coins, okay, because I think I think that's probably a good thing to look at. Well, um, I mean, I've got the. Uh... Are you looking for a different reading than what I have open now? Uh, um, no, I think it's the numbers at the top of the things, aren't they? How many are bearish and how, you know, how many coins are bearish, how many coins are... I think that's what those numbers are at the top, isn't it? Yeah, and, and generally speaking, a quick review, the AA score is going to help identify coins that have been pummeled and are due to refer recovery, which is why this number is so high, 246. Or 245 yes, bullish, one very yeah, bullish. Is that yeah, what you mean? Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, just, um, yeah. So I just looked at a few of the very highest uh, AA scores. And, and again, those of you in AA, it's uh, what what they say is this, a coin with a, with a high score. Well, let's use this, um, we use state as an example. I, I looked at nano trades on exchanges I don't use. So uh, based on this, uh, theta number 79.0, there's a 79% chance that theta will go up 3% or more in the next 48 to 72 hours. Now, given the significant drop in volume in most of the trading or most of the, uh, the exchanges, I'm not sure if that's a valid statement anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for one to 2%. Anymore, I, 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 I'm not looking looking for three to five percent like I was during the the bull market, and, and then conversely when the when the market was falling, you know, on the short side, I'm just looking for for small little gains. And um, but there's some value to trading the ranges and staying in longer. I'm trying to learn how to do that too. That's not how I was taught. Not really. Um, what I feel comfortable talking about, but I know a lot of traders do well with that approach as well. So. And then this over here is more of your trend, um, your trend numbers, your short-term sentiment in the last 24 hours, long-term sentiment compares the last 24 hours, the last 20 days. I, I like this one a lot. I use this sort quite a bit. Elder Impulse is a technical indicator. Um, you know, the daily compares 20 and 50 day averages. And then the hourly, so like it sounds, uh, um, well, you can read those descriptions in there. But what I use the most for sorts other than the AA 
is the long-term sentiment and the elder impulse daily. And I look at these on the 15 minute charts to try to find potential dip trades or late lab and shorting more than longing um, on leverage. So uh, does that cover actually? And then Craig was asking about, you know, how many tokens are, are bullish versus bearish um, on the long-term sentiment. Got 73 bearish, 37 or 73 bullish, 73 bearish, 150 neutral. But you can look at these numbers here if you're if you subscribe to this and figure that out. I just like to sort, you know, click that long-term sentiment and then match them up. You know, I got very bullish here on long-term sentiment and bullish here on elder impulse daily. That's something I'm going to look at. So. But we'll start with the AA score. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to ask about that, Craig? Well, maybe we lost them. Okay, uh, let's look at Theta. I've got that one up here. Got a AA score of 79, but bullish on the uh, Elder Impulse. Or bearish, excuse me. Uh, I'm on the five-minute chart, and I don't see anything immediately to look at. Um, I like to catch these kind of dip trades here. You know, had I been uh, trading last night and had this open, you know, this had a this had a a bubble, but then it hit the top of the SMA line and started to drop. So, the, in my mind, the dip the dip sequence is starting anew right with right with this one here. One two, three. I'm not sure if I would have gotten in here or here. But, um, yeah, that would have been a pretty good dip sequence to get into. You know, looking back, had I gotten in right about here? You yeah, know, that makes a nice move. I, I probably would have looked for getting out in this vicinity with this resistance for 2%. So that would have happened, you know, 13 hours. That's a pretty good day trade. But we don't have a setup like that at the moment. So if you're looking to long something uh, tonight or this weekend, what I like to do is go to the 15 minute chart. And there's two approaches that, that I've done the last year. Some is trend based and, and, and some are, you know, finding the dip like I just talked about. And one of the ways I like to find the dip is to put alerts on, on divergence indicators. So this is the uh, the divergence from any indicators. Unfortunately, this does repaint, which means that it'll adjust after there's new data, which is kind of frustrating. But the, the alerts are easy to work with. And then I've got this other one here where the alerts aren't as easy to work with, but that does not repaint. So I, I, got to, I like to match, match those up. And uh, we've got potential... Divergence here on the CCI, it'll tell you which um, which indicators have the divergence. Forgot what that one is, commodity something. But, um, you know, this one's momentum, histogram, MFI, RSI. So, and this is really easy to put an alert on. Right click, add an alert. Um, it's already got negative divergence detected. Once per bar close, that's important. Um, and then call it what you want. You know, long-term sentiment buy. You know what? <laughs> I just defaulted to the <laughs> to the shorts because that's what I've been trading lately. Uh, the, we should uh, we should do a long. That's what I was what I started with. I'm a little rusty, guys. <laughs> All right. So if you want to go long, say you're trading on spot. Um, you got you got to drop down here to positive divergence detected once per bar close, and then um, yeah. a score, and you're good to go. Uh, they have changed this. Uh, Trading View has so they have a separate tab for notifications. So make sure you have a, some kind of notification going, or your alert won't happen. So, or it'll happen, but you won't know about it. And these are the ones I like to use, the, the pop-up on my desktop, notify on the app, which is on my phone, and play a sound in case I'm away from my computer but still still at home. 
And that's how you do that. Now, if you don't want to deal with divergence, maybe you're uncomfortable with it, you'd rather catch the trend. Um, just before uh, mid-November, which was my last uh, Zoom, I was messing around with the super trend, and I created some of my own um, my own inputs. I mean, the default of this, you know, is ten and three. You know, I like. Um, oh shoot, where was that? Yeah, five and three. So I I shrunk the ATR period to give me more more alerts. It's a little more sensitive that way. And um, but to be candid, I haven't really tested this enough to to recommend it. I'm just telling you guys what I'm doing. I tried a few others, you know, chandelier exit and okay, drawing a, a blank, but you know, even some Lux Algo stuff and some things like that. But um, go back to the, to the basic super trend. I don't trade. I haven't traded lately with 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 the trend as much um, because of the range we're in, but you know, I like to do trend when we, when we have a solid direction, which we don't really have right now. So, so that would be another way to go. Right click on your add alert and it's really easy. Super trend buy or super trend sell. If you want to trade both directions, you can click the super trend direction change. I, I have done that before and had some success with it. So that would be another option. And then finally, Put alerts on your on your RSI. I've had the MFI here, but I, I, I took it out because I just thought it was too similar to the RSI, and I found the MFI to be a little too sensitive. So when the RSI dips below 30 and starts to come back on the 15-minute chart, I find if I bounce over to the five-minute, I'll, I'll be in a dip, dip sequence, usually in a second or third dip. So um, if you want to Try to catch a dip sequence here on Theta. You can right-click on your RSI like this, crossing up um, 30, just considered the oversold area. Um, once per bar close, and then set your notifications as well. And I would call this AA score purchase, like I did on the other one. So. So that's uh, three separate approaches to how to find a, a a good entry on Theta, given the information we have. Any questions, comments on uh, on Theta? Okay. So that's the AA score approach. Since I got a late start on this, I'm going to try to keep it a little short. Um. Hey, CJ, no, uh, no comment on data, but all this information for me is very useful because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of new to this stuff. So this is a uh, good to, good to go over. All right. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I'm just looking f to help, you know, all of us get a little bit better entry points than, you know, just jumping in without any analysis. Uh, and I try to keep my, you know, my Zoom call reasonably accessible to, to beginners and um, and intermediate traders. I kind of consider myself an intermediate trader, certainly not an expert. So um, anyway, thank you for your kind words. Let's move on. We'll look at, uh, let's look at one more on, let's do another sort. I told you earlier, I like the long-term sentiment sort and try to match that up with the elder impulse. Uh, I've got Gala and Fett. Ocean, XMR are all bullish on both long-term sentiment and elder impulse. Um, Gala had a big move, 28%. That might be played out already. When I see something like that, I don't usually try to try to jump on. I'm usually looking for a maybe a high single-digit, middle-digit move. Um, like this oceans, 3.9% long-term sentiment and elder impulse, elder impulse, both bullish. 
I think, I think that's worth another look. So let's go ahead and check out Ocean. Okay. Can we do something now? Well, we're kind of stuck in the squeezy little range here. Yeah, not even 2%. Um, so we don't have a good entry at the moment. One thing I forgot to mention, if you don't want to deal with indicators, another perfectly reasonable way to get in is to set alerts at support. Um, and this area here is support, you know, on the five minute chart. And that ranges from, you know, 18.38 cents to, you know, down here about 18.16. So I'd probably go with this 0.185, you can set an alert, you know, right click anywhere on the chart, add alert, and 0.185, and this is from the long-term sentiment sort, so that would be what I would look at. And when it hits that, maybe keep an eye on the on the candle action. Does it hit that and start to bounce, or is it plummeting? You know, you don't want to you don't want to get in if it's plummeting. So you do need to reevaluate once you you set that that support alert and um, uh, yeah, just check it out. You can do it on longer time frames as well. You know, the 15 minute. You know, here it's you know 18.2 you know, 18.27, then you get, you know, more support down here, like 17.6. So these would be potential good entry points as well if it drops over the weekend. All right. Um, so again, the, the indicators I like to use, divergence. <coughs> we have bullish divergence just printed, but you see how, how it just... Just bounced over. Yeah, that's that's the repainting I, I warned you about. Um, the last, but they don't. These two indicators don't always have the same the same indicators within them that they're tracking. So ideally, I would see like this MFI one here, and then maybe this. And this just shows how many indicators are are showing them. Um, the divergence and that I'd like to see that one be around here somewhere, you know, kind of close to it. Um, but you know, it's not entirely necessary. So, I mean, obviously this would have been a good entry, you know, almost, you know, 10% move. So it would have been a, a really good entry on, on divergence. Um, but if you want to set a divergence, make sure this candle closes and, and this doesn't repaint. Add your alert there, positive divergence, once per bar close, and name it, and you're good to go. So that's one approach. And if you'd rather go the trend option, you know, these look pretty good. If you took this cell, you might have been hurting on that. We've done some ladder buys or dollar cost averages on shorts, but I had one go badly against me or I got liquidated. So, you know, um, whether you like to do ladder buying or, or stop losses, you know, that's, that's up to you. Um, it kind of depends on the, the coin and how it's pumping, uh, you know, whether depending on which approach I use. If I'm high leverage and using a high amount of, of funds, I'm more likely to use a stop loss. If I'm low leverage and a low amount of funds, I'm more likely to ladder buy. So, okay. But, um, but all these, these buy entries look pretty good, at least in the, in the near, in the near past. So that might be the way to go on this one. Um, it doesn't look like on the 15 minute chart, any of these dipped to the 30 area. We got close on this one here, which would have been a great entry, you know? So when I see none of them, you know, some of them coming, coming down close to 30, but not quite making it, 
I'll go ahead and instead of the 30, I'll use a 35 or 32 or something like that. So in this situation, I go crossing up. 35 once per bar close, and there you go. That's your, uh, your RSI alert. Then when I am using the trend, I look at the TDFI and the RSI as a confirmation. Um, if these are in line, you know, you can, there's a, a bunch of indicators you can use for that purpose, but these are the two I've been using uh, most recently. Well, I think that covers ocean. Um, thinking we'll do one more, uh, a Friday afternoon short. Uh, any questions on ocean before I look for one of those? <laughs> okay. So what I like to do for these is sort the opposite. And looking for very bearish or bearish on the long-term sentiment and, you know, bearish on the elder impulse daily. So I've got a few of those down here. And I think dot would be one to look at. This one's having been struggling lately. So let's check out dot. If you're, if you're not, if you don't have much experience trading spot, you know, I suggest you, you do that first. Um, though there are some exchanges where you can do one or two X leverage uh, on the short side. But, you know, I learned, I just spot traded for nearly two years before I did any leverage. So, um, you don't have to necessarily wait that long, but you should at least get comfortable and have some consistent profit spot trading before you get into leverage. That being said, let's see if we can find a short on dot. Okay. Five minute chart first. We're towards the top of the Bollinger band. If I see, I sort of do a, an opposite of the one, two, three dip, one, two, three pump, one, two. I think we're a little late on this. If it breaks above again and starts to drop, that might be something to get into. Um, so let's go to our 15 minute chart. Yeah, let's do that first. Divergence. We're going to look for bearish divergence instead of bullish. And we just had one form, six indicators. Somebody is noisy. Gonna mute everybody. Okay. So, um, there's your divergence alert. Negative is the first one that comes up once per bar close and you're good to go. Um, that's a long-term sentiment sort. I'm actually already in this from this morning. So, um, which unfortunately has gone against me. <laughs> um, and then on your super trend. How do I do this? Okay, noise went away. Super trend looks pretty good. Uh, this buy didn't do that well, but this one did. This one did. The sell, not bad. You know, over 1% on each of these moves on the 15 minute chart. Pretty good. And then if you want to use an RSI alert, instead of going down to 30, go up to 70. Add alert on the RSI, crossing down instead of up. And 70 instead of 30, once per bar close. And that's my long-term sentiment buy. All right, so three approaches. Uh, you could also go maybe to a 30 minute time frame and I'm seeing some resistance here at right about where we are. So based on this information, you might want to get into a short now, not financial advice, but 
All right. Any questions on DOT or uh, anything we've looked at? Okay. All right. Well, um, any other questions about, you know, day trading crypto in general uh, before we close this one down and uh, head over to Carbon? All right. Well, thank you for uh, for attending on a Friday afternoon. Sorry for the technical difficulties at first. If you're watching on the recording, appreciate that as well. Hope to see you live um, on Monday. Have a good weekend.